This is the inside of the 2021 Benimata Soro T487. If I firstly come to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volts on by firstly pressing this button, followed by this one. As you can now see, all of the interior lights have come on. These can all be turned on and off on their own switches. Beside that, we then have water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out of the taps, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. The last top button operates the awning light. Buttons along the bottom mainly give us information. So this first one here will give us a condition of the leisure battery. And then this one here will give us a condition of the vehicle battery. This one lets us know how much water is in the fresh tank. Whenever the waste tank needs emptying, a red light will begin to flash next to the waste tank symbol just here. When the water drops into the last amber, this amber light again will flash just to let you know you're getting low on water. And if either of the batteries were low, again you'll get flashing indicators. This last button here just controls the illumination of this control panel. This light here is just indicating that we're currently connected to mains electricity. And this one here will get an illumination when the engine is started, just to let you know that the alternator is charging both leisure and vehicle batteries. To view this, these two buttons here do need to be turned on. Beside the main Benamar control panel, we have the Truma control panel for the heating and hot water. At the moment you'll see it's displaying the time and it's letting us know that we're connected to mains electricity with this little picture of a two pin plug just here. If I now press this button in, you'll see a series of icons appear and as I begin to rotate this button, they will start to flash. If we start with the first one just here, this one is for your heating, so if I now press the button you'll see that the heating is currently off all we now do is just rotate and pick whatever temperature we would like it to be inside the motorhome and it will go right the way up to 30 degrees once you've decided on a temperature just click and that will then store it in and you'll now see a little flames appeared above that little flame just represents the heating system and it's just letting you know that you've set a parameter whenever the heating is in operation this flame will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If we now move across to the next icon, this one here is for your hot water. And again, if I now click, hot water is off. If I rotate, we can heat hot water in eco mode, which will give us a temperature of about 40 degrees. If I rotate again, we can heat in hot, which is about 60 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having a shower in quick succession of each other, or if you just want the hot water extremely quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating is running, it will turn the heating off as it needs to use that extra power. And Again, the icon will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. The reason the heating is not currently running is because it's an extremely warm day today and it is actually above 30 degrees inside the motorhome. Next, we have power source. So we are currently using, to heat our hot water, mains electricity using two kilowatts. If I rotate the button, I can lower the power consumption to one kilowatt. Very handy if we're on a low amp site to try and avoid tripping. 
If we have both power sources available to us, we can run on a mixture. So a mixture of gas and mains at two kilowatts, or a mixture of gas and mains at one kilowatt. This particular settings are very handy in the winter months if you need to get up to temperature nice and quickly and it will only consume gas as it is required. And then lastly, if we have no main supply, we can solely run on gas. Next, we have the circulation fan for the heating system. So currently, if the heating was to come on, the fan is in eco mode. We can turn it up to high. What we can also do with the circulation fan is use it to vent the motorhome as well. But to do this, we do have to have hot water turned off and the heating turned off. And then we can put it into vent mode and we have a fan speed of 1 to 10. If I now drop to the lower icons, this first one here is for a basic timer. So if I now click on it, it will ask you for a start time. And then when you would like the timer to end. And then what you would like on within that timer. So let's say we want the heating to come on and heat up to 18 degrees. We want the water at 60. We want to be using dual fuel and we want the fan in eco mode. Once we've done all this, timer on or off, if I now activate the timer, the timer icon will come up there and now within that time period those settings would apply. If I now revisit it, I can turn the timer back off and when we go back in, we can then alter it again. Next, we have clock set. And then lastly, we have the settings menu. So within this, we have offset for the internal thermostat, which is just here. If you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly adjust it. Temperature, just if you prefer it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Brightness of this screen. 12 or 24 hour clock. Language. Index. More for the technicians, it just lets them know what software it's running. And then lastly, full factory reset. From time to time, these control panels may throw up an error code. They will usually be something relatively basic. So if you're running your heating in your hot water on main supply, and you're not plugged in or you tripped, it will throw up an error code to let you know. Or if you're trying to run it on gas, and you have no gas, etc. An error code will appear as a warning triangle where my finger is just here, and you'll get a series of numbers and letters on the screen. If you then look in the manual or Google it, you can usually find what the problem is. And then nine times out of 10, as long as you rectify the problem, the error code will just automatically disappear. If this is not the case, scroll to the warning triangle and double press on it, and then it will sometimes say no error and then disappear. If this still doesn't work, if you still have anything running like I do at the top here at the moment, just turn everything off because it can reassess a lot faster when it's not trying to do lots of things at once. If that still doesn't work, I then always suggest the good old fashioned turn it off, turn it back on again. And the way we turn this control panel off is just by holding this button in. If that still doesn't work, I then suggest doing the full factory reset because sometimes that's all these control panels require. The Truma system can be controlled via the Truma app. If you are going to use this, you need to download the app onto your device Make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and then launch it. Once it's launched, it will firstly ask you to come to the iNet box, which in this model is located above the microwave. So you can see it just up here flashing away. It will firstly ask you to come and press the Bluetooth button. 
Once you've pressed this, it will send the signal out and you will be able to connect up to it. Once you've connected, you will be able to control your heating and your hot water locally via Bluetooth. What you can also do is purchase a pay-as-you-go SIM card, which slots in where my finger is here. You can register this through the app and then you can control your heating and your hot water from much further afield. Whilst we're up here, we also have the digital amplifier for the television aerial on the roof of the motorhome. On and off, just here. Control the boost, just here. And then it's just a matter of installing a television on the bracket and then plugging it in up here and then tuning it in. If I now come to the bench seat just here and remove the cushions and we now lift up here we can now see the Truma combi boiler. To drain the boiler down for winterization, we need to use the drain valve just here. These particular drain valves are automatic, so if it's in the closed position and the internal temperature of this motorhome drops below about 3-4 degrees, this valve will automatically open and drop any water that may be in the boiler to frost protect itself. If we are going to manually drain it, what we need to do is firstly make sure that the water pump is turned off and then come to the drain valve and twist the blue diamond. When we do this a blue button is going to pop out at the base of the unit just down here where my finger is and it will now drain itself out. If you are fully winterizing the motorhome I always suggest that you also go around and open up all the taps because this will release any airlocks in the system and make it drain off much better. When it comes to refilling make sure your taps are closed, fill up your fresh water tank, come to the drain valve, twist it back like so and then go to the bottom of the unit, just down here. Push the button in, you'll hear it click. And then turn the water pump back on again. And it will then begin to reprime the boiler. After a few minutes, begin to open up your taps. They'll cough, they'll splutter as they force the air out. Once they're running freely on both hot and cold, close back up again and then the system will fully reprime. If the boiler has frost protected itself all that will happen is the blue button will just pop out at the bottom and to reset it all you need to do is just push it back in. If it will not stay in it's just too cold in the motorhome and you will need to turn your heating on to generate some warmth to allow it to reset. The only time we're touching that blue diamond on the top is when we're manually draining the boiler down. If we now come to the travel seat, we can pop it up just by turning here and then lifting. And you can now see it's in the upright position. Tucked underneath it is the battery charger just here. This is what charges both vehicle and leisure batteries from the main supply. To make the travel seat we need the cushions and the headrest which are located in the wardrobe at the back. So you can now see I have got 
both cushions and the headrest from the pack in the rear wardrobe. If we firstly start with the headrest, just literally pop it in and it will lock into position and then to remove it we're just pushing on both of the buttons on the side just there. If we now grab hold of the seat we can pop that into position just here like so and then we have the backrest just here If we now come across to the other bench seat and again remove the cushions, we can then see the other travel seat and then we have the fresh water tank just here. So we have the water pump just there and then we have access inside the water tank just there. So if we want to add any cleaning powders, etc., to the fresh water system, we can just unscrew the black cap just there. Another travel seat operates exactly the same way. Again, just twist here and then lift up. And underneath this one, we literally just have storage. And again, the travel seat makes up with the two cushions and then the headrest. If I now come down beside the habitation door, we have just tucked in here the 12 volt fuses just here. So if anything's not working on 12 volt, just check to see if you've blown the fuse. We then have the trip switches just here. So very similar to what you would find in your house. So if something's not working on main supply, just check to see whether or not you've tripped. You've also got your test button and the main RCD switch at, the, at this end here. So you can check the site electrics. And also tucked in here is the other part of the battery charger. This is what the solar panel is also linked to solar panel will charge both leisure and vehicle microwave just here always advisable to remove the contents for travel this will only work when you are hooked up to mains electricity we have the power setting at the top here and then we have time set on and off just here. Beneath that we then have the Fetford fridge freezer on and off just on the button just here. This is an automatic model so as long as you are on A for auto it will find the best power source it can for you. So because we're currently hooked up to mains electricity is put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug just there. If I was now to run outside and pull the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And as soon as I start the engine of the motorhome, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. As you can see, the display will disappear after a few seconds, but you can just tap the on off button and it will then re-illuminate to let you know what it's up to. I can take it out of auto if I want to, so I can manually put it onto mains. I can manually put it onto 12 volt maintain. We are going to get an error code at the moment because the engine is not running. And I can manually put it onto gas. But to be fair, the easiest option to have it on is auto. Temperature control just here. 
And then the last button just here is the unit's anti-condensation jacket. So the anti-condensation jacket is currently on and then off. The jacket definitely needs to be on in the hotter summer months. This stops a build up of condensation behind the unit, which would then run down and form a puddle underneath it. It can be obviously turned off for the cooler months if you would like to. Freezer box at the top, fridge underneath, and because it is a very large fridge, it does have a secondary travel catch just at the bottom here. Above my head we have the Omnivent fan. So to operate this, firstly wind the roof vent open. And then we have middle button to turn the unit actually on. And then we have arrows out for extraction, arrows in for cooling. Variable fan speed just by pressing. Do make sure that the roof vent is closed for travel. Extractor fan just here. Light switch on and off and then fan itself on and off. And beneath that we have the hob and hot plate. So for the hot plate on and off just here. Again, this will only work when hooked up to main supply. The two gas rings, just push in, twist, and push the igniter. Beneath that, we then have the oven and the grill. Push in to the left for the oven. And then push in to the right for the grill. Gas isolation taps for the appliances just in here. So we have the cooker and hob, barbecue point, heating and hot water and the fridge. They're all in the on position and quite frankly they can stay like that. I always say if you do smell gas in the motorhome, go to the source and turn the gas bottle off. These are more for maintenance. Next we have the washroom. So basin, just here. And then the Fetford toilet just here. The bowl does swivel. To open to the cassette, just slide the grey lever across. Push the flush just here. Do make sure the water pump is on or it will not flush. And then close back up again. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside, it will not come out. So if you do feel resistance, just make sure that nobody's left this open. The level indicator for the cassette is just here and it will rotate round to red to let you know when it needs emptying. Shower cubicle just here. Do make sure that the shower screens are fully secure for travel. And then we have the wardrobe just here. So in here we have the cushions for the travel seats 
and then the headrests the drop down bed just operates by pressing the button just here and then as you can see there are adjustable nets that go all the way around ladder just hooks onto here if the bed was to malfunction it can be manually wound up and down just tucked in the inspection hole just here is a 13 mil nut you're supplied with this winding tool and it's then just a matter of popping it on and then just winding the bed up or down to make the lower bed you will need to get the freestanding table and the bed insert from the garage and you will also need the two backrests from the travel seats. If I firstly just lift the cushions out of the way you will see that we have these parts here to rest both the table and this bed makeup part onto. So firstly, if I now just slide across and lift up, we can then drop this piece at the end just here. Next we then need to drop the table into this part like so so we now have this now we need to drop the cushions into place so this large one just sits here and then These ones then drop in to here and the back cushions just drop down behind them. We then flap these ones down and then you can see we have just a gap at the back there. So we then take the two travel seat cushions and drop them behind. And there we have our double bed with two headrests.